what is going on it is tuesday april 27th checking in taking the pup for a walk here he is everybody meet rambo rambo hey rambo he gets a little camera shy but uh yeah checking in i ended up taking today off or this morning off uh I had to switch the leash there. Uh, I got my COVID shot last night in my first round, so it was just kind of be a little extra precautious. Didn't know how I'd feel in the morning, so I got a little extra sleep. I feel great though, so that's good. I uh, got, you know, a little like probably a mile or so jog. Didn't even record it uh, in on my lunch break, so that was good. Everything's feeling good, so we'll take it. But yeah, that was kind of the big reason I wanted to wait to start my training plan. Uh, until next week is because I didn't know how this week would go with getting the COVID shot. Things are getting pretty busy. Uh, I am an expecting father, so that could be happening any day. Let's go. First time saying that on the vlog. That's pretty crazy. That's going to make these next, you know, 16 weeks up until the race that much better. But uh, yeah, so I'll be checking in. Going to stay stay loose this week. Definitely still going to go through some solid exercise. Make sure everything is nice and tuned up before we kick it into gear next week. But like I promised last video, and I know you're all waiting for, I will definitely be going in depth on how I'm going to be uh, approaching this training plan. Again, emphasis how I'm going to be approaching this. This is definitely not a how-to guide. Uh, you know, this is just an average guy training for life. So we will definitely be checking in uh, on the next workout, which will be a trail run. So I will see you then. Take care. Here we are reporting live from the studio. Just checking in. Went out for uh, a couple miles. Just uh, wanted to check in, tell everybody I'm doing good. Uh, the more and more the week has gone on, the more and more I get nervous to uh, share my approach to training for a 50 miler. So we'll see how that goes. But I definitely think I've came up with a lot of good tools, um, especially for myself. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not riding a how to train for a 50 miler. I'm riding a how I'm going to be training for a 50 miler. So I think it's really important to take a lot of things into consideration. <laughs> like dogs barking gonna mess me up um but take a lot of things into consideration you know such as my pace you know i'm not the not the fastest guy out there i purposely said that when someone drove by so i don't know if you know might not have heard that but i'm definitely not the fastest guy out there uh and i'll, I'll admit it <laughs> uh, i don't have the most time in the world especially like i said earlier having a new baby uh, as generous and kind and lucky as I am to have my wife support me. I, I still don't have ample time to uh, train for 50 miles. So there's just a lot of things to take into consideration as I uh, write up the beginning of this training plan, which I'll be sharing later. Um, Saturday after my run, I'm gonna sit down, pour myself a nice glass of uh, iced tea, maybe even order a little Mount Mike's, you know what I'm saying? And uh, kind of break things down. But uh, I'm excited to share it, even though, you know, like I said, I gotta swallow my pride some, some points in here, but uh, we will check in then on saturday not sure what's gonna go down on saturday but it'll be a decent run at least at least 10 miles so like i said just enough to kind of keep the engines moving keep things going along swiftly so i will check in then we're gonna do this we're all gonna do this all three of us who uh are watching this video including myself so the two of you out there we're gonna do this together let's get it What is going on? It's Sunday, May 2nd. Uh, the May is finally here. I know I went out yesterday for a couple miles just to shake things out, but right now is the moment that we've all been waiting for. The drum roll is going, and the crowd's going crazy. 
we're going to be dissecting how I'm going to be approaching uh, training for the Moran Headlands 100 50 mile race. Uh, I guess first things first, it's the race is called the Headlands 100. Uh, I'm not trying to emphasize I'm doing 100 miles. I'm basically doing the Headlands 100 and half. So there's a, a 50 mile option, 100K and 100 miles. So I'm doing the 50 miler. So I'm basically doing the Headland 100s half. So I guess just to get straight into it, um, I am looking at some notes, so I'm not, you know, not distracting, not uh, looking away from the camera. But uh, so the headlands to 50 statistics. So it's a 50 mile race, um, as I've mentioned, I think now uh, 50 times in the matter of this video. But it is a 50 mile race. Um, it's 11,000 feet of climbing. So for reference, uh, 11,000 feet of climbing and 50 miles. Uh, I've done a couple or I've done 150K with 11 thousand feet of climbing so that's 31 miles but i think it was yeah about 31 miles with 11,000 feet of climbing um so the legs have definitely done that before now the name of the game is getting back into that shape and that level of fitness to where i can you know withstand an extra 20 miles uh, on top of what i've done but uh yeah that's going to be the biggest thing is the vertical gain um and the weather which we'll get into the weather in a little bit but those are the two those kind of the name of the game the uh, battle itself will be the distance the vert and the weather but uh yeah so we're gonna be going in with a 15 week training plan now this next 15 weeks uh some could say these are the busiest 15 weeks of my life <laughs> like i said earlier i am an expecting father uh, i have a wedding that i'm a part of uh in july which is very exciting shout out to dylan if you're watching this um, so all in all, it's, there's kind of just a lot going on right now, but it's all good stuff. So, you know, that was kind of the thing with this channel too, is it's training for life. Um, you know, it's finding a way to accomplish these exceptional goals, these big, you know, bigger than us kind of realities while still maintaining a normal life. So that was one of the big things I didn't, <laughs> didn't plan for it to start off like this, but I have 15 weeks until the race day. Um, and like I said, I got... Um, I, do, I, got a, I got a due date, a wedding date, a bachelor party date, and then <laughs> it's all going to be in the middle of summer. So it's good. It's a lot of things to look forward to. But like I said, so it's a 15-week training plan. The way I'm basically going to be approaching it on the fitness style um, is going to be a kind of a uh, roller coaster approach. So I'm basically going to be trying to go up, build my mileage up, build my vert up eh, with my bad hand puppets. But I'm basically going to be building up. And then for about mm, one to two weeks, I'm going to plateau at about 50 about 55 miles um in that week now that week's gonna have back-to-back -back 20 milers on diablo uh, it's gonna be in the middle or the early of, of july so there will be hot days out there which i know i'm gonna need um so i'm basically building up this roller coaster for the first nine weeks just kind of getting my legs back into it you know getting the turnover getting the volume getting the vert all of that up until the week of july 5th um that's when i'm gonna top off at 55 miles um that i guess quote unquote kind of like my peak week uh, after that definitely you know gonna the roller coaster goes back down uh, we're gonna keep kind of trending back down until the race week which will be about six weeks later uh, i don't want to hold that that peak volume for too long one uh, this is my first time ever properly training for a race so i really don't know how my body's going to respond to consecutive weeks of high mileage so that's going to be a big thing um two um like i said i don't have all the time in the world i have a couple weeks here on my training plan that are starred you know these are kind of very busy weeks uh, in my life and, and it's gonna make it kind of hard to get these miles in so that's why it was so important that i kind of made it all happen within the guidelines of my life um so that's kind of the overall thing is basically it's going to be a roller coaster going to go all the way up peak uh, and then for about the next six weeks kind of drop down my mileage uh one thing i'm definitely gonna when i'm when i'm coming back down with my mileage and, and my hand movements are probably confusing everybody is this karate uh when i'm going back down with my mileage definitely the biggest thing i think that i need to do is keep the intensity up just because i'm running less miles per week doesn't mean that i'm running you know necessarily slower miles um, that's a big thing you know i'm not not running any slower in this per se and i'm definitely not you know taking the foot off the gas i'm just taking the foot off of the amount of miles that i do each week so that my legs can stay fresh and by the time we get to race week my legs will be primed ready to go and ready to do this damn thing 
Now, one of the big things when I'm approaching this training plan is like I've mentioned before, I'm not having ample time. I have a good amount of time and a very supportive uh, family and supportive crew. So it's great to have that, but I do need to make sure that I'm maximizing my time. With that being said, um, I went through the science, doing a little scientific approach uh, and find out my pace zones. So like my zone one, my active recovery, zone two, zone three, zone four, all the way through zone six. Um, I'll put those on the screen right now. Hopefully that uh, that made sense and that looked good. But basically what these are, are, these are pace zones. So kind of based off my most recent half marathon pace, these kind of tell me of where I should be on days that are more for recovery, um, which would be zone one. As you see, I saw on the screen, zone one is the active recovery, almost just like a very slow pace um, up until you know zone six, which is my anaerobic. That's going to be a lot faster than I'll be moving, but it's still important to kind of get those those days in and spend those, you know, not even those miles, but just those minutes and those meters in these different pace zones with a more scientific approach. Um, so that at the same time as I'm building up my legs to get ready for this 50 mile race, I'm also building up my legs for speed. It's just going to help with the entire entire scope of getting my legs ready for this race. Um, one of the big things with these pace zones is it is a bit of a gut check. Um, as you saw on the screen, my pace zones are not not blistering fast. Uh, in fact, they're quite slow. But it's very important that I don't try to get out of what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, these are what's right for me um, and not get in my head like, oh, I want to run like a an eight minute mile or, you know, just because I can run, you know, because I can hold a pace of nine minute a mile for you know six seven miles i i shouldn't be doing that i need to take a more logical approach to this training plan because in the end i'm training for a 50 mile race in august i'm not training for a tuesday medium six mile run that i'm going at my anaerobic pace and then i'll be sore for three days and it's it's gonna be hard for me to kind of take a step back and really start thinking okay what I'm doing now is going to pay off in the long run just because I'm not pushing myself to the very limit uh, in each training run I'm building those blocks so that when it comes to race day I have more blocks to stand on right? you know does that kind of make sense so uh, that's a big thing I you know I put my runs on Strava I put them out there and it sometimes it could be tough seeing how slow my pace is but I just got to understand I'm running my own race um, I'm not running to finish on the podium i'm not running i'm not even running for pr i'm running to do something that i've never done so i really need to take a humble approach to that and the way i'm going to be doing that is by using my pace zones um for flat miles for even some trail miles as well and just using that approach so now that we've talked about pace zones we've talked about you know the statistics the overall kind of approach hey hey so we're kind of you know now that we've kind of laid that laid that down um let's go into week one in depth so the way that i'm going to be approaching this like i said we have the overarching kind of roller coaster and again with my karate moves uh but we have the roller coaster going up and then going back down but like i said with this being such a busy time in my life i don't want to set myself up to fail and i feel like i'm setting myself up to fail if i start to write out every single day for the next 15 weeks and what i'm going to do you know, realistically, I don't have that uh, flexibility. I don't have that bandwidth uh, to be able to do that and stick to it. And I know if I try to and then I don't, I'm just going to end up falling behind and getting frustrated and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a one week approach. Uh, I will lay out uh, on the screen my week one through 15 kind of mile um, mile goal for each week and just so you can kind of see how it's going to come together. But we're not going to break it down in depth right now. We're going to go week one um in depth right now and then next week we'll break down week two we'll kind of review what week one did if it worked if it helped how we're going to approach week two while still staying within those miles because there's so many different ways you can cut up 30 miles in a week and i think things in the past that i've done while i'm training for other races uh, shorter races 50ks is i will wait until the weekend to get my long runs in which is great but you know especially when we're running a 50 mile race a lot of it's going to be getting used to running on tired legs and for me that's not necessarily going out for a 25 mile run on a saturday that's you know cutting those 25 miles into 
you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, cutting those, you know, six miles a day, that's 24 miles right there. That is going to be more beneficial for me heading into this than just waiting until Saturday. So that's why we're just going, you know, one week at a time. But let's kick it off. Week one is going to be 25 miles. The way that's going to work is Monday, we're going to go for a five mile trail run. Tuesday, we're going to hit the weights. Wednesday, we're going to go for seven miles. Uh, easy, flat, slow pace in the zone two, which is my endurance. Um, again, I'll put that back up on the screen. Uh, Thursday is going to be a rest day. Friday, we're going to go back and hit some weights. And then Saturday is going to be a 16 mile run. Uh, coincidentally, it's 26 kilometers because it's my 26th birthday. So I had to find a way to work that in there somehow. Um, again, of course, this is all pending on the birth of Ava Alexandra, the greatest. Uh, if she decides to come this week, then this will kind of be a wash because uh, obviously that's my priority and, you know, I can't really plan for that. But, you know, assuming that she does not come this week, this is my approach to week one. Um, so that's how we're going to be approaching it. There are a couple things that I'm going to be emphasizing over, you know, the entirety of this training plan. Um, one is frequency. So making sure that I get enough miles in, but not only that, but making sure that I'm splitting it up into four, you know, four or five different runs per week, not just lumping them into two weekend runs and stuff like that. Uh, heat training, a little bit more on that um, later, but it's going to be hot in the Marin Headlands in August. Um, so I need to be prepared for, you know, suffering in the heat and not panicking, you know, and not getting behind and stuff like that. So there's gonna be a lot of that, a lot of research stuff like that. Um, third thing's ankle mobility. Uh, it's definitely not helping with the weight that I'm at, but I'm also running into a lot of issues where I will have more ankle pain before my heart starts to feel like it's pumping too much blood and I need to rest. It's almost like a little bit of joint tightness is causing me to stop on my runs more frequently than it is my actual endurance. Um, so that's definitely something that I am also going to be focusing on. And fifth, or no, sorry. And fourth, but not like, and fourth, but not least is losing weight. That's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, I think right now I'm walking around at about 200 pounds. That's pretty heavy. Um, so I need to get down to, I want to be closer to 180. So that's about 20 pounds. Uh, the reason I'm approaching it like this is 20 pounds is a lot to lose. But in my case, a lot of it is just water weight and diet. It's not that I'm necessarily holding on to a lot of long-term stubborn fat. It's just that I need a good, almost like a good cleanse and then need to kind of keep cutting down from there. So I don't think 20 goal, or 20 miles, <laughs> I'm tired today, it's Sunday night. Um, I don't think 20 pounds is too much to lose in the next 15 weeks, especially with this vigorous of a training plan. Uh, I do think that it will kind of come together. Uh, but of course, that's gonna be another big thing that I'm really focusing on. All right, it's getting late. It's getting dark. It's Sunday night. I'm excited to get started tomorrow. Um, I definitely think it's going to be a great training block. It's definitely going to be the first time I'm really committing myself to some sort of structured plan, even though I know I've mentioned earlier, it's not going to be necessarily your most detailed plan um, in advance. Uh, going into each week, except for the week that Ava's born, uh, I will have an exact plan of what I'm going to be doing. Um, on each day, just so I at least know however I got to cut it up, however I'm going to be approaching it. Uh, there are two things. I will probably at least be getting one weight training day in per week. As the mileage starts to increase, um, that's obviously going to be my main goal. So I will definitely start tapering back down into that one weight training day per week with four runs. Um, earlier on, I will definitely be doing, you know, probably three and two. But that's just, like I said, just while we're kind of getting getting the legs back, getting things moving, kind of getting myself back comfortable into this, you know, this frequency of working out. I haven't been doing that much over the course, almost the last year. I mean, I've definitely been getting back into shape these last three or four months, which is good. But as far as consistency goes, it's probably been close to a year since I've really been consistently training for something. So I, I'm really excited for this. I think it's going to be a great challenge, especially with the fact of putting it on YouTube as well. That's definitely going to add a whole nother aspect of something that I'm not used to. 
forcing myself to get on here each week and you know record my runs record my workouts debrief how the previous week went find out how we're going to approach the next week i really think it's going to be good for me um one to keep me accountable two to keep my people entertained i know i have a lot of fans out there in the world that are watching this um so it's really important to me that i don't let you down <laughs> I, I tried to say that with a straight face but i couldn't anyway so I'm signing off. Look, it's May 2nd. The battle begins tomorrow. Um, there's really no way to, to put this other than just straightforward. The Marin Headlands 150-mile race is going to be a battle. It ain't going to be easy. You know, the last two years, it's been 105 degrees on race day and 99 degrees. It's going to be a absolute slugfest. So all I can do right now is for the next 15 weeks is try to prepare myself to be ready to suffer for 50 miles. And that's really just, you know, as much as I want to break it down and, and simplify it, that's it at the end of the day. These weekly miles are important. Um, but all the other things that I'm doing in my life are important during these times, too. So it's it's going to be important to not just physically be ready, but also mentally. So that's going to be another approach that I'm you know coming at this with a different angle, making sure that I'm covering all my bases. But that's going to be it for this week. Um, it's officially the night before week one. I'm excited. Like I said, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be going out for a five-mile trail run out in the Akalani's Ridge. So I will check in then. Um, but other than that, you know, this is this has been good. This is a good way for me to kind of open up. As, you know, as the week goes on, we're going to keep getting more detailed. We might need to readjust. You know, that's part of training for life is sometimes you have to just readjust. You know, but before Sunday night comes... I'll make sure that I have 25 miles. And if that drags on into Sunday, we'll find a new approach for week two. But that's really what this is all about. This isn't a how-to guide. This isn't a you know way to train for a 50-miler. This is how I'm training for a 50-miler and how I'm training for life. So I will see you in the next video. Let's get it.